guys better hurry up and finish your homework. I think your dad's home. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Mmm, something smells good. You missed your favorite recipe. What kept you? Hey, Dad, ain't I game champion after last night? She can't even talk right. Never mind count my score. What's in the box? I got a great deal on a beautiful piece of equipment. Oh, boy, a video game! A video camera, honey. Another camera, Arthur? What about our vacation? Let me try it, Dad. They've got one of these at school. No, no, no. First, we're going to read the instructions. Oh, that would be a first. Honey, you know you've been after me for years to take pictures of the kids. And tomorrow's Max's second birthday. Right, and keeping a bunch of toddlers happy is hard enough. I complicate matters. Video is virtually foolproof. Just turn it on and point it. Unfortunately, honey, my automatic iris is rapidly closing down. Good night. And good luck. All right, let's see if I can get a picture here. TV monitor on. VCR power on. Blank cassette in. Okay, camera on. Good. Automatic iris switch. Good. Sound on. Lens cap off. Hey, all right. Zoom control. Here we go. Arthur, put the camera down. You should never point your camera into a bright light. It's not good for the camera. What is this? A demo tape? I'd say you've got your work cut out for you tomorrow. Shooting a birthday party is no piece of cake, you know. It takes knowledge. It takes trial and error. Step by step, you've got to learn how your camera operates. You've got to learn how to move it, frame with it, light for it, record sound with it, produce, direct, and plan, and I'm here to help you. I don't believe this. Look, I know you're tired of looking at life through other people's point of view, particularly Uncle Todd, the family photographer, right? Wait a minute. How do you know how I feel? And how do you know who Todd is? I'm aware of many things at once, Arthur, just as you'll have to be tomorrow when you're trying to capture those magic moments. Maybe I'm overdoing it here. I think I'm going to call it a night. What's the matter? Can't sleep? Oh. No wonder. There's a lot to consider. How do you plan to shoot Max's party tomorrow? It's just a birthday party. Available light? Handheld, right? <sighs> Who are you? Why me? Let's just say I'm the voice of experience, your personal guide. And you, Arthur, are a challenge, an experiment. Arthur, are you on the phone? No, honey. It's a voice. I just can't shake it, talking about my camera. <laughs> it's just your imagination. Look, Art, video can be a lot of fun, but you gotta perform or you're gonna catch it from a lot of people. How much you got tied up in this camera anyway? Shh. Okay, honey, good night. <clears throat> now, let's get serious. We'll just turn the sound down here and concentrate on the video for a minute. Here's a slow pan. Now they zoom into a close-up. Now a medium shot. See how they bring your attention to that final image? I guess not. Maybe I'm coming on a little too strong. <laughs> Okay, you want a rose, Elise? Yeah, Happy come on in. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Max. <laughs> hey, let's hear it. Look at that. Arthur is trying to do too much his first time out. At this stage, he should keep his camera work simple. A big three. Todd keeps his shot wide and steady, but Arthur's close-up is shaky. 
Okay, smile. <laughs> Arthur hasn't learned how to keep his subject in focus. Pan is smooth while Arthur's is jumping. How's your coloring, Buckley? Hey, Max, look at you. Uh oh. Would you like to open it? Pretty red bow. Yeah. Todd is keeping his shot wide and gets both the present and Max's reaction. Arthur misses both. Perhaps Arthur will learn from his mistakes once he sees the playback. Oh, thank God it's almost over. Have a good time, Art. Where were you when I needed you? You hadn't thought anything out. It would have been a waste of my time. Dad, how come you were moving the camera back and forth like that? chicken pecking for grain. It was a first try, right, Art? It was my first try, honey. I'll get better. I hope so. We're all gonna need glasses soon. Good night, Dad. Good night. Good night, Dad. Don't call us. We'll call you. Right, kids? Waste of time. Now, wait a minute, Art. I told you camera moves weren't easy. It takes practice and thought. But I can tell you have good instinct. My instinct tells me I should return this camera before it's too late. See, you've even got a sense of humor. Now, if you could only adjust your mind's eye to the viewfinder. It's as if you're looking at a TV screen, only it's your picture up there. I'll explain. What was it you were trying to get on tape, Art? The present? The cake? Max's reaction? Your indecision shows. But before we even discuss what you shot, let's talk about how you shot it. Your zoom was shaky because you didn't have firm control of the camera. Put the camera on your shoulder. Find a comfortable, firm position. Feel the balance. Whenever possible, look for something solid to help brace yourself. A table or a wall. A tree. Kneel. Or sit. Like that. Doesn't that feel more secure? Obviously, if you don't need to be mobile, a tripod is ideal for steady shots. It attaches easily to most cameras. This is a perfect time to practice. You're alone and not concerned with directing subjects. As soon as you turn the camera on, the very first thing you do is adjust what's called white balance. Most cameras have a switch you depress for a few seconds, and it automatically adjusts the camera to the color temperature of the sun. You mean once I adjust for white, the other colors are lined up too? Essentially correct. And we'll be talking about color and light in detail later. It's hard to think of colors when all I see is black and white. Because most camera viewfinders only show a black and white image, adjusting your white balance becomes critical. Pull back out, Arthur. It's very hard to handhold a steady shot on the close-up end of your zoom. The zoom lens not only allows you to move in and out, but it gives you a variety of lens sizes in one. That means you can get more subject matter into your widest shot than in your tightest shot. And you can choose your frame from wide to medium, to close up. To focus, zoom all the way in. Now focus, and your shot will stay sharp all the way out. By the way, no need to waste tape while adjusting your focus. Put the camera in pause and it won't be recorded. One of the underlying purposes of the zoom is to get an establishing shot. You can get a similar effect by moving your camera closer. That's called dollying. The advantage of the zoom is the convenience of staying in one place, like when you're using the tripod. 
Move the camera up and down. That's called tilting. Move the camera left and right. That's called panning. Slower, Arthur. When compared to the human eye, a camera lens is far more limited in what it can actually see. Therefore, you must move it slower than you would normally think necessary. When your camera isn't level, look what happens to a pan. It's easier on a tripod because you can actually level your camera. Now, take what you've learned and have some fun with your camera and your family. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Checklist number one, camera in movement. We've shown you the fundamentals of camera movement to have you start shooting with some reference points. Now buy a quantity of videotape and shoot it. Fortunately, videotape can be recorded, erased, and reused almost indefinitely like audio tape. Carefully screen your material as soon as possible after you've shot it. As you do, try to remember what you intended to visualize and why. To put a scene in the right perspective before shooting, close one eye to see as the single lens of a camera does. You can even frame your shots like this, so people think you're a little eccentric, big deal. Remember, when panning, move your camera slowly. To focus, zoom in, focus, and pull out. Keep your camera level by watching the horizon. Whenever possible, attach your camera to a tripod for steadier shots. The next part of our program is about framing and composition. <laughs> okay, let's take your coat off before you go to the game. Okay? Oh, you get excited. Maybe I'll get you a bike ride. Oh, 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 oh. Mm -hmm. You have a good game, okay? Man, let's go. Can't you just watch the game like any other parent? It's kind of embarrassing. I mean, it's not as if I'm a star in the team. I'll be lucky if I even get to play. You're number one in my book, kid. Now, I want you to see you go out in that field and have some fun. But, Dad, I've never go even tried to go. Go on. Come on, Alicia, ready? Go in the game over there and go after the ball. Oh. Oh. Okay, throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out, Andy. Throw it out. Get into the game. Come on. Let's go. You got three seconds, two seconds, one second. Throw. Go. Throw. Throw. To the ground. Okay, I'll just go after you. There it is. Come on. Pick it up. That's it. Go after it. When you've zoomed in tight, holding steady is almost impossible. A wider shot appears steadier. When following the action, the trick is to think what will happen before it happens. You want to try to lead the action just a little. Try not to overrun it. Pull back a little to see more of the field. Uh-oh, sun's back. Let's check for white balance. I don't see any difference. Take the camera away from your eye for a minute, will ya? Maybe you'll see a difference. Okay. Arthur, wait a second. Frame your subject's head so they are approximately center screen. Concentrate on the upper body. Don't leave dead space. It's uninteresting. Remember, TV is two-dimensional. To give you the effect of three dimensions, you need your subject, your foreground, and background. The rule of triangle and semicircle grouping of subjects is an old tried and true axiom. But whatever your grouping or composition, avoid strange juxtapositions art, like the buildings on top of Elise's head. I gotta save this one for my files. You know, when you take more close-ups between action shots, the result on tape makes for more interesting viewing. That's a good one of Scott, but watch your horizon. That's it. That's using your head. All right, set. Yellow team, throw it out. Art, Art, are you forgetting the game? There's Elise playing. 
Where are you looking? You've got to concentrate on the game. Hey, Art, what are you doing? Look, would you stop breathing down my neck like that? I'm trying to have some fun, too. Or isn't that allowed? So Elise finally scored a goal and you missed it. Great. Checklist number two, framing and composition. There's more to composition than meets the eye. You'll be much better off taking your time to study your frame. Try to vary your angles and shots in a well-composed series. High angles generally make the subject appear smaller. Low angles just the opposite. Remember, look for foreground and background objects to add depth and dimension. Frame your subjects so they're approximately center screen. Stay wide when following action. Avoid scenes with uninteresting dead space. Look for shots with triangular or semicircular composition. Be aware of strange juxtapositions. The next part of our program is about lighting and sound. You're in silhouette. I can't see the wrists. Critical, Scotty. Let's move him around. Put the sun in front of him. Hmm? You're backlit. Move around towards me. All right. Over here. Now, the automatic iris in your camera adjusts to the overall light in your frame. Uh, -huh. uh no. Move a few feet uh, away out of the shade of that tree there. Uh huh. Good. Yeah, you want to avoid light and dark combinations. Uh -huh. Got it, Dad. Good. Good. Now we see why your dad shot 88 last week, yeah? I see your dad's taking you under his wing. Somebody's got to help him, Uncle Todd. Right. I'm sure you know that these babies are balanced for any kind of light source. You know, daylight, overcast days, tungsten, fluorescent. Can you mix tungsten with daylight? Sure. Uh, just remember to white balance and you'll oh. be okay. You have other lights, don't you? Oh, yeah. I got a couple of clip-on floods and a sun gun that attaches right here. Uh -huh. And then I bounce it just enough to fill the area with more light. Oh, all right. See? There are many types of additional lighting available with barn doors and scrims to control the source. They aid in boosting artificial light, whether it be tungsten or fluorescent. The lighting is perfect art, but you have an omnidirectional mic on and it will pick up sounds from everywhere. Oh, he's not paying attention. David, I told you I had that video. Come on and see this. Come on, Charlie, let's go. Susan, come on out. Mary, come on. Jim, can you come out and see my tape? Charlie, let's go. Elaine, come on, come on. I want to show you this tape of my kids. You've got to see this tape of my kids. It's great. <laughs> Be great. The least is only eight, right? Yeah. And I heard them playing this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Max didn't even notice me at first. But listen to this, they say the cutest things. Hey, Art, I thought you were getting good at this. What's the kid saying, Art? Where did all that noise come from? 
Where are the naked dancing girls? It's real cinema verite. I... Excuse me. I don't understand the scene now. But the vine here. Sorry, Art. It's cute, though. <laughs> well, I'm real sorry the sound didn't turn out. I don't understand. It, uh, oh, well. Nice try, Arthur. Unfortunately, you didn't monitor your sound. You know, a mic doesn't have a brain. You have to think for it. You should have placed your mic much closer to your subject. That's where the mother is. I didn't want to disturb them. That's another problem. How to be inconspicuous while shooting. Chances are your camera has a built-in mic and picks up sounds from all directions. In order to pick up good sound, keep the camera close to the subject. Or you could plug a separate mic directly into your camera or recorder and turn off your built-in mic. At some point, you should test sound. Earphones plugged into your recorder or camera are invaluable for monitoring sound before and during taping. Here are some other types of microphones available. A shotgun. Point it directly at your source and it will pick up little of the surrounding sounds. Hand, desk, or stand mics. Most are built to record one or two people. A lavalier is small and can be attached to a person's shirt. You know, you could save this piece by putting narration on your track, like this. Max didn't even notice me at first. But listen to this, they say the cutest things. Or music, like this. That's a good idea. Checklist number three, lighting and sound. In videography, it's almost as if you have to retrain your eyes and ears to respond like a camera and a microphone. The human eye automatically adjusts to changes in light and color. Its optics are far more sophisticated than most cameras. Next time you walk through your house, notice the changing light conditions from room to room. Be aware of the shadows, the change from artificial light to daylight. As you wander outdoors, be aware of the many different influences on light. The time of day, position of the sun, and objects like trees, buildings, clouds. Remember, white balance whenever the light changes and always after turning the power back on. Whether artificial or natural, make sure to have sufficient light for shooting. Place your microphone as near to your subject as possible. Use earphones to monitor your sound. The next part of our program is about planning a production. I'd like to welcome everyone to Florida the Sunshine State and to the St. Augustine sightseeing train. Your vacation, the perfect time to shoot video. You have a sustained period of time, no worries about work or interruptions at home. And now you've learned the basics, operation of camera, movement, composition, sound, and lighting. You can afford to be more selective about when you shoot and how. Take your time. You're ready to bring home a wonderful record of a special time for you and your family to enjoy viewing for years to come. You're spending much too long establishing your locations by shooting signs. Your approach is too traditional. You're missing the reality of what's going on around you. You're doing it again, Art. I'll be right there. What about your subjects? They're a lot more interesting than your signs, you know. He's finally got his subjects, but now they're not doing anything.
that fort's at least 300 years old. <laughs> so, where are we off to now? Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> How are you kids doing there? I certainly feel younger. <laughs> I do too. I feel weird. You feel weird. You're actually going to shrink a little bit at least because you're so young now with all that water. He shrinks in. Red duckies. Oh, look at that one. Isn't he cute? Oh. Okay. Wave to daddy. <laughs> in the duck thing. Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh no, my battery's dead. I didn't even think of that. All right. Preparation is the most important element of any production. You must know approximately how much you want to shoot to have the charged batteries or equipment to charge them and the necessary tape stock on hand. Batteries are good for approximately an hour or so of shooting before they need recharging. And it's always better to have too much tape stock than not enough. It's all part of advanced planning, thinking things through. Well, maybe we think differently. You simply have to do a little more thinking and planning, that's all. was trying to make to Arthur concerns his expectations and his family's expectations of this videotaped record of their vacation. To be sure, each of us would feel differently about the specifics. How much material to shoot? How long will the finished product be? Will I tape five or 30 minutes a day? And who's going to view the finished product? Who's the audience? Shooting anything that strikes the eye at the moment will prove to be disappointing in the long run. You'll risk missing what you've really set out to get. Are you shooting to communicate your family in certain places? Or the beauty and the history of the scenery? Or a combination of these? What's the balance? Uh-huh. Boy, was that dinner delicious. Oh, isn't it good? I love lobs. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Did you like dinner, Scott? Yeah? I really, really enjoyed it. It's so pretty here. Look at that sunset. Oh, it is. Wait a minute, you know, just a minute, I'm going to get my camera. This is great with the sun and everything. Hang on. A perfect example of lack of planning. By the time he gets back, the moment will be lost. Some things can't be recreated. Your subjects are not always on when you want them to be. Your light is always changing. On vacations, you should remember that the sun is often bright and hot. The shadows are harsh. Plan to shoot in late afternoon or early morning. The pros call it the golden hours. Okay, I got it. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. There's no, no more sun. Maybe I'll catch it tomorrow, okay? Don't be discouraged, Arthur. Just think, you're getting better all the time.
Well, uh... Look at that. Look at this one. <laughs> oh, that was a good game. <clears throat> oh, remember that play in the outfield? Uh... What's the matter, Dad? Uh, I think I recorded over the interview. What? Where the kids got the autograph from the players? Oh. Oh, you're kidding. Oh. I can't find it. Need I say anything about properly labeling and storing your cassettes as soon as possible after a shoot? There's always something, right? As a home videographer, you have to wear a lot of hats. Unlike a professional production, you have to do it all. Handle itinerary, scout locations, plan, produce, direct, and run camera, sound, lighting, and record. Kind of like a one-man band. Cleaning and properly packing your equipment is equally important. Specially made cases can save the life of the camera. All of these things you have to plan. Now, Arthur is really doing everything right. He's getting his wide shots, his close-ups, his camera movements are smooth, and he's having a good time as well. The more pre-planning, the better the production. It's as simple as that. Expect the unexpected. Plan for it. The better prepared, the more you can enjoy the event. Well, Rose, you have to put the ball away. Now, the boys are at the center of the tank. They're beneath the hoops. Right you can avoid to some extent the electronic glitch between shots in a couple of ways by putting the recorder in pause but never more than a few minutes or by fading to black iris to close checklist number four planning a production make a list as you mentally prepare for your next video experience list the action subjects places time of day amount you wish to shoot, length of shots, positions for camera, equipment necessary, batteries, additional lighting, and so on. As you did before, rehearse if possible, scout locations. We've been talking about approach, but not point of view. This has all been from Arthur's point of view. Imagine how this might have looked from Elise's point of view, the point of view of the batter, or even the porpoise's point of view. Remember, decide subject matter in advance. So, where are we off to now? Have necessary equipment cleaned and charged in advance. Try to shoot in the early morning or late afternoon when the sun is less harsh. Label all tapes immediately after shooting. For smooth transitions, put recorder in pause or fade to black, iris to close. The next part of our program is about the art of video. Arthur, I like your bare chest, but I doubt if the bride and groom would approve. Oh. Honey, please, we'll be late. Coming, coming. Obviously, you've decided to shoot Patricia's wedding, regardless of how I feel. Well... Oh, you know she specifically asked Todd to do it. And having two photographers falling over each other might be distracting, to say the least. Honey, I have been preparing for this mentally for weeks now. It's important to me. <laughs> Hurry. Yeah.
and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Father, you have made the bond of marriage a holy mystery, a symbol of Christ's love for his church. Hear our prayers for Timothy and Patricia in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. Checklist number five, the art of video. In home video, everyone develops his or her own personal style. Stare into the scene using your viewfinder to position your subjects. Make certain that you prepare equipment the night before. Arthur will edit his wedding video using the enhanced editing capabilities of his VCR and another recorder. Editing your material is often rewarding and gratifying. The results may surprise you and your audience. Remember, scout location in advance of shooting an important event. Don't disturb the action. Become a part of it. Look for the unusual and spontaneous. Now, let's see how Arthur has progressed. Okay, is let's everybody see. ready to oh, watch yeah. this great dog production? Uh, all right. Oh, can somebody get the uh, the curtains there for me? I'll get it. Great. All right, here we go. Here comes the bride. There. <laughs> oh, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, Uncle Todd took a traditional approach. He covered the ceremony and reception quite well, establishing the situation, cutting into medium and close shots as the subjects and flow warranted. Yes, one right in the balance for daylight. Yeah, that's pretty good. Huh? Well, there it is. There it is. I'd love to show you and Tim if you buy me. Oh, good. Good. Great. It's probably not going to be as good as it has, but we'll give it a whirl. Same thing, right? Is it just this a is terrific? my boy here. This is my it's boy. I've been trained. Oh, I use the yeah, I use the wedding invitation as the opening. Oh, hey, you can tell me about that. That's a clever idea there. Can you go tell Arthur took a different approach than Todd. He shot a more personal and individual view of the event with many more close-ups. Arthur's tape may be more interesting to watch, but of course, both Todd and Arthur's approaches are totally acceptable and satisfying. <laughs> Daddy got real good, um, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Uncle Todd's wobble. <laughs> there she is again. Do you like this closing shot of your father? Uh, oh, nice. Very good. That is good. Very good. Hey. How about some soda? Huh? Okay. How about you kids have some soda? Huh? A little champagne? Hey. 
Let's start our production company. Yeah. Right. Right. Is that a series? I know. I know. I'd like to do That would be a lot of fun. You did it, kid. Thanks to you. Listen, I'm sorry if I've been obnoxious at times. But in the future, I promise I'm afraid that I'm going to have to be moving on, Art. You're on your own now. But, please, how can I Arthur. ever... Uh, don't go. I've taught you the basics. Now uh, you can advance on your own. Wait. You'll do just fine, Arthur. Arthur has learned the basics. With practice, almost anyone can master the tools to express their feelings. The joy, action, and emotion of reality. Now it's your turn, and I'm here to help. The nice thing about home video cassettes is you can look at this show again and again. Stop, repeat, whenever you like, whatever you like.